All right, sad day today. So there actually comes a day in the life of almost all of these where they literally kill themselves. And initially I was very upset, right? I thought this was malicious from the part of Harmon, the parents of JBL, but actually I've, I've gone back on that, so we'll, we'll talk more about that later. And so the problem I'm having, right, the, the battery still lasts okay, right? It does last less than it used to, but it leaks, right? The enclosure is no longer, no longer airtight. And that is a huge, huge, huge problem in this case. So I'll play a snippet of this so you can recognize whether you have the exact same problem. All right, so this is not acceptable, right? There's no way you can listen to this, right? And so what I've done to fix this is buy a charge four. And this one works. All right, have a good one, guys. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so I actually have opened this before to investigate what the problem is, but uh, we'll go over the entire process once more because it is good fun. Again, the reason why I went with the Charge 4 is I still believe deeply that JBL, right, has done a solid and honest job with these speakers, right? They have made a huge foresight and a rookie mistake, but I am letting that go because it has been fixed in the Charge 4. We'll talk about that a bit later. All right, so to open these, you'll want to unclip the back and then the front will be screwed. So the way, right, just any any old tool, something a bit more blunt so it doesn't uh, scratch the fabric, but you lift, you lift this up, and then it releases. Uh, as you'll see, there's, uh, there's two spikes that locate this. Again, this is put together extremely nicely. Like, I'm really loving how this is put together, and it is a damn shame. Uh, that they pulled that uh, bitch ass mistake on us, but yeah, we're all human. I mean, who knows? Maybe they're, yeah, who knows what the Harmon Group people are doing. Um, all right, so you take out these two screws, and now this will continue to release. I just pop this up as well. And how was this coming apart? All right, so just from the back. I completely forgot. How was this supposed to come apart? All right. So just don't force it because there's a lot of pretty long pegs throughout, right? One of them is, for example, this one, right below the logo, and it has a few more locating ones. Again, I've cleaned this, so it used to be a lot more dirty. You could definitely do this on your own. It's just two screws. Uh, the construction on this is, is fantastic. I mean, this this is just pornographic. This this is super nice. This feels like sturdy as hell. Like super impressed. Uh, speakers are fine, right? I've uh, I've heard a lot of people complain that uh, their speakers are are going busted, and I mean that should should happen eventually. But um, I haven't listened that loudly. Although right up to I think above like 50, 40, 60% volume, the bass is at its at its max, right? So this does have dynamic bass. So you are pushing the speakers to their limit, starting at like 40% or something. All right, so two screws here, another two screws on the back. I don't know what would have happened had I not narrated this, I mean. This is highly critical stuff, right, I'm saying here, as always. And again, very nice that all the screws, at least thus far, are exactly the same screw. These seem different, but yeah. All right, so you pop this off, right? And the, 
I don't know how you'd call this, but uh, this back piece comes off again. Everything comes out very nicely. It's very nicely done. Molding is top notch. Mint condition. Um, and then you have this battery cover, right? Which covers the battery. Problem with this is, um, I mean, I don't know what the tolerances are, but looking at the Flip 3, which I also had, uh, the JBL people did not leave great tolerances for their batteries, right? They also didn't, like simultaneously, they bought shit batteries, which expanded, right? I don't know if you guys encountered it, but in old phones and in general, lithium lithium ion batteries, as they get pretty old and as they get... This happens, I think, more when they get discharged or over discharged, especially. Um, they do inflate and they do inflate with a great pressure. Pressure so great, cracked my fucking case. Like massively. Like all of them, all of the screws are popped off. All of them. All right. 100% of them. What? Did this one survive? Mm, I don't think so. Did it? Nah, this one's starting to fail on the bottom right edge. I can see it now. Anyway, so pretty bad, right? I'm, I'm very upset. Very upset indeed. Another way to test this, again, it's, it's way easier to hear it in this state but you can still hear it with the case on, right? Just press on both the passive radiators and you will hear like this, this leak. All right, and, and, and the problem goes a bit deeper because these were never super expensive speakers, right? This, this is not no Apple HomePod type, type deal. Um, Bowers and Wilkins, whatever. These were like 100 to 140 euros. I think I paid about 100. Now you can find used ones for like 40-ish. Um, and Harman, I actually emailed Harman and they no longer supplied this part. They routed my email to a service which said that they can fix it for about like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, which basically totaled my speaker immediately. And 50 bucks would include a repair to this back cover, which means pretty much like siliconing it in. I mean, what the fuck else are they going to do? Uh, just gluing it back in and uh, battery swap. I don't trust them with the battery, so I ordered another battery on AliExpress. That was about $20 or like $15, $20. And uh, we'll attempt to repair this in this video, right? Because I do want it that this isn't actually my speaker. Um... I do want to actually keep using this until my battery comes. And I actually found a guy on eBay, super nice guy, actually sold me the back, was tearing down one of these and sold me the back cover for 10 euros. So I'll be getting that and the battery and we'll be doing a kind of service grade swap. Actually over service because the service is the, anyway. All right, so all that being said, the only thing that's left to do now is uh, show you guys how to actually repair one of these even though i did brag on uh, having ordered replacement parts i do want to still repair this until those arrive and that should make for a nice video so all i did was unscrew the screws and this is the kind of separation we're getting so the cell inside is really wanting to come out Oh, there's, there's one more screw, so that's why it's not flying off completely. All right. Oh, there's one more screw. Damn. There's another one right here. And right, the one problem I'll be having is cover I bought is from a blue one so this will actually be blue all right yeah so this is the pack 
I'll uh, perhaps run some measurements on it and see what kind of capacity it has left. And actually, dude, the AliExpress ones did say great power. I, I thought those were fake, but no. No, it is great power indeed. It is kind of crazy. All right, hey, I think I bought the exact one. The exact same one. And as I mentioned before, this is within the sealed enclosure. So now there's absolutely no air tightness. Okay, this is how the back looks. Nothing super fancy. We have some padding here, which... Uh, pain in the ass to remove. And this, which is actually tightly glued. Okay, so these are actually removable. Alright. Actually take a quick look at this. So... To change this, I would imagine you have to open it a tiny bit further, which I won't do now because I don't have a replacement one. But yeah, this looks like a chubby guy. Like, uh, are these supposed to be that thick? Would be my question. And how balanced are they? Would be another question. Hmm, tough. Yeah, anyway, so what do we do? Do we do sanitary silicone? My all-time favorite, or hot's not. Mm. That's a hard question. So even though those were kind of cracked, Plastic is uh, still pretty good, and they are still holding on. All right, so uh, these still have some strength, especially the the gasket is holding them in. So what I think I'll do is just, um, yeah, fuck it. We'll just run a thin layer of sanitary silicone, and right once that sets, it's gonna be easy to rip out again. Cleaning it is, is pretty tough if it really clings onto the stuff, but eh, shouldn't be that hard. Let's first see if it still works. It still works. Let's um, see if it plays. All right. Yeah, no, it's not going to sound super great in this state. Okay, so sanitary silicone it is. It has been unanimously decided. Shocker, if, uh, if I may say so. All right, so do we have enough over here? I think we do. Barely though. All right, so let's first get some fresh, fresh silicone. And that's enough. And uh, pff, yeah, I think, I think we'll just Run one lap around this and be done. All right. So that being said, we have a, what is this? Like two millimeter, three millimeter? gasket um so yeah let's uh now alignment is of the essence let me see how i cannot fuck this up although and this the gasket looks really nice though really nice Okay, put the screws back in. Okay, so we're actually done and I think I'll um, let it cure for about an hour and then uh, we'll come back and do a sound demo.
Be right back. All right, so it's been about five hours. Let's see, the silicone cured. I've elected to um, also cover the cracks. I'm not sure those should have been sealed by the by that existing orange seal, but I didn't want to risk it, so I've added a tiny bit more for good measure. If you do this, do be careful. Try not to uh, cover the screws as this kind of stuff is pretty hard to get out. In some cases it does stick very well. And so I did, um, did take a look and we are getting quite a lot of motion, so should be fine, but let's, uh, let's do test it. So yeah, um, I do call this a fix, right? So um, now it's a question of just uh, covering everything back up. I will swap the battery eventually and also the back cover, but oh man, this lasts like an easy six to 10 hours still, right? It's, it's not the original 20, but I mean, come on, am I gonna really throw it out? Uh, I don't know. If it's gonna manage to further, right again, keep in mind the silicone is flexible, so it will flex a tiny bit, right? So this cures extremely elastically. And depending on how well it uh, it grips, it can really, it can really do its job, right? But I don't know. So now it's a question of either immediately swapping it out with the new cover and battery once they do become available or actually letting it be until the battery goes to shit and and then doing the swap right the the only thing to keep in mind is if you do buy a battery do immediately check its voltage it should be about i don't know let's say 3.5 something like that if it's 4.2 it's too charged try to discharge it keep it at like 20 to 40 percent in storage right um if it's close to zero or less than let's say two perhaps do return it but uh, otherwise yeah all right so to clip this back together uh, this back piece comes comes on from this side and then you you bring it over like this and then you screw the four screws back so that's fine that's no problem however this top shell you do have to be a bit more mindful uh, all right so label that label badge comes on the front and what you want to do is start start from the front right so line the screws up you might even screw them in but uh, I'd say wait and yeah you want to line these pegs here with these holes here so the way you do this it's more or less trial and error. Should be kind of like this, I don't know. Just jimmy it into place. All right, I think I got it. No, I didn't. All right, how about now? Okay, so front seems fine, although there's a huge gap here. I don't know. Is there? Eh? Maybe there's not. Hmm. Anyway, so we're at this point where the front is, is clipped on but the back isn't. And then again over here, I don't know if you can see this, we need to line, whoop, we need to line these up. Right, this one and this one. And they each have corresponding pegs on the main body, so 
those are in and once those are in the two in the middle will come into play okay and right before we clip the last ones in let's uh let's actually put the screws in again i do have to say i'm quite impressed by how well put together this is very nicely thought out i don't know easy to easy to access it's just very beautiful oh with only two slight marks over here but yeah come on it's fine and it really sounds perfect so i'll milk the battery for a bit longer uh, let's see what happens how I decide if, uh, if I'll swap the battery out with the new one and swap the shell battery cover but I don't know man I mean if this lasts like five to ten hours now with the swollen battery I might just let it die a bit longer and pff, what's it gonna do right like it's not gonna leak so that's fine it's gonna start pushing again when it's gonna break the seal, I'll just I'll just swap it then. I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, it's it's a dick move and it's it's not chill and it's hard to say whether it was done on purpose to kill all of these in five years and ninety percent of them in three years or just a foresight, right? And to answer this question, we'll go over to the FCC where we'll take a look at the Charge 4, right, which is this one. Uh, the Charge 4 has only one speaker, it's a bit more powerful and sounds a tiny bit better. It's a bit fatter, um, overall a better speaker, and it has Type-C on the back, right. And so... So if we take a look at this, right, we'll see that they have went with three 18650s, which will never expand, right, these are steel steel shell lithium ion batteries right this is how one of these looks and they have three of them uh capacity should even be larger although i'm not sure and i mean this these might spill their guts out but uh boy i don't think these will get fatter anytime soon so yeah i mean either on purpose or not but they have fixed the main problem or at least what i would say is the main problem with these and they have, right, again, used very high quality chips. Uh, if we scroll down lower, they've used the CSR 8675, right, which is an excellent Bluetooth chip, uh, Bluetooth 5.0 native, uh, TPA 3118, I think is the amplifier, although I'm not sure. And yes, yeah, so they basically fixed the problem and yet they, they keep their spot as, in my opinion, like bang for buck for right, sound quality and functionality. Number one, right? Number one, I, I don't, like, let me know, right? If, if anyone has a different opinion, then I, I definitely would be open, but I don't know, right? I don't know if you can beat these. These are, these are about a hundred bucks, a hundred euros when they're on sale which is quite often. And I mean, you're getting a lot for your 100 euros, like a big lot. And they've even made it a bit more elegant right now. All the, both the lights are white. Bluetooth one isn't blue anymore. I don't know, I just, I'm just a big fan. I'm, I'm a really big fan. I'm, I'm happy that I fixed this one. I'll keep it in service for as long as it takes. And then I'll buy a four or a five, I, who knows. But anyway, I hope you guys can um, restore, rejuvenate, revive your charge. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. But otherwise, have a good one.